So for two weeks in a row, we have seen Jaden Daniels look like a freaking superhero. But what was so much more significant about Jaden Daniels' performance against Ole Miss than it was against Florida? We'll get into that on today's edition of Locked on LSU. You are Locked on LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, we're also on YouTube as well. So make sure to check out the YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button. We're going to get to 1,000 subscribers by the Alabama game. I'm trusting y'all to do that. But I also want to let y'all know that today's edition of Locked on LSU is brought to you by Sling TV. Sling has something for everyone, especially when it comes to college football coverage. So with a massive lineup of games across the ACC, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the SEC, I can always watch the games that I want on Sling, and now you can too. So check out Sling TV now to see the massive lineup of games that they have all season long. Sling is the TV that you love for a price that you love. Try it today. So we've seen Jaden Daniels in back-to-back weeks look pretty freaking unstoppable. We saw him against Florida with an uncharacteristic performance in a good way. Six touchdowns, three in the ground, two through the air. Something that Joe Burrow didn't even do in his tenure at LSU was six touchdowns, three in the air, three on the ground. So Jaden Daniels looked great against Florida. And it was beyond just the stat line. And of course, throwing for 350 yards and six touchdowns, Anyone's going to be pleased with that. But it was beyond that. It was how much more comfortable he looked, how much more assertive he was in the pocket. You could tell that he and and his receivers had built that chemistry and something just clicked. And I said after the Florida game, I loved seeing that from Jaden Daniels because I felt like we were finally seeing the Jaden Daniels that we were promised when Brian Kelly and Mike Denbrock brought Jaden Daniels into LSU. But I said, I want to see it again because doing it against Florida, doing it against Florida is great and getting a win against Florida invaluable, but I want to see Jaden Daniels do it again, because I'm not going to be convinced that he is some sort of brand new, completely different, completely changed quarterback until I see it week over week over week until I can officially change my expectations for what we can expect from, from Jaden Daniels. For, you know, if if I have to worry about it being another 80-yard passing game from Jaden Daniels like it was against Auburn. Now, of course, LSU won that game. But still, that game didn't make me feel too confident about Jaden Daniels moving forward. I also don't think it made you feel very confident about Jaden Daniels moving forward, seeing as though on message boards and on Twitter, I saw so many LSU fans begging Brian Kelly to bench Jaden Daniels for Garrett Nussmeyer. I wasn't going to go that far because I had seen enough from Garrett Nussmeyer to know that this team would not be in better hands with Nuss than it would be with Jaden Daniels. But we all had pretty fair concerns about the quarterback position. So after the Florida game, I said, I need to see it again. And that's exactly what we saw on Saturday against Ole Miss was Jaden Daniels do it yet again. He did it on the, on the ground and he did it in the air. He had I was 21 of 28, 250 passing yards, 248, just running up there. Uh, Two passing touchdowns, 23 rushes for 121 yards, and three touchdowns. And just like the Florida game, beyond just the stat line, Jaden Daniels looked confident and looked comfortable. And even down 17-3, he stepped up in the pocket and looked like he was in complete control of that game, which is something that we haven't seen from him, or we didn't see from him, rather, earlier in the season. So that was a good thing. So that's that's one reason why. Of course, Jaden Daniels gets my offensive game ball for the week. That's what I do every Tuesday after a win. I get offensive, defensive, and special teams game balls. So Jaden Daniels gets my game ball offensively because he was so in control of that game. And because, I mean, five touchdowns, I mean, I think kind of speaks for itself. But it's this performance against Ole Miss for Jaden Daniels means so much more and I think carries so much more weight than it did against Florida. And that's for two reasons. One of them being exactly what I just laid out because he did it again. He did it against Florida when we love to see it. 
did it against Florida. And that's really what catapulted LSU to a win was Jaden Daniels just on being on fire in the swamp. It means even more to me against Ole Miss because he's done it again. Because I can look at these performances and say they're not necessarily a fluke. Now, I'm still, I still want to see more from Jaden Daniels. This is what I want to see from Jaden Daniels week in and week out. A six touchdown performance isn't necessarily realistic every single week, but I want to see that poise that Jaden Daniels has had in the past couple of weeks throughout the rest of the season. But the fact that he's done it twice now, that carries more weight in my opinion. And I think that's more important to me. And that's why the, the Ole Miss performance is more important to me is because we've seen him make it a habit. I mean, Brian Kelly even spoke about Jaden Daniels after the game about the improvements that he's been making week over week. This was Brian Kelly. You know, this was a big game uh, in, in a lot of ways because it was th this needed to be that, um, you know, we're reaching that level of consistency of performance. And um, I, I think you know, I think we both knew that if he was able to solidify another performance of similar um, quality that we were off and running. And I think we both looked at each other and said, all right, let's go. Uh, it's time. And I think we both felt the same way that he's in a very good place uh, where he can run this offense now and he feels very comfortable with it. And he's ready to do really good things for us. There are two words that Brian Kelly said there that I think that really stuck out to me. First and foremost is consistency. And that's kind of what I'm harping on here is that with a team that seemed like it was very inconsistent, that we didn't really know what to expect from LSU week in and week out, Jaden Daniels included. Now we've seen two repeat of really solid performances. And that's the consistency that we've all kind of been waiting for and consistency that we didn't see earlier on in the season, because this team was still learning each other was still trying to kind of get their legs underneath them was still trying to find its identity. And I think that the consistency is a, a product of this team starting to find its identity. And I think it starts and ends with Jaden Daniels. It starts and ends with the guy under center. And I think that's all kind of starting to come to fruition. But the second reason why I think that this Ole Miss performance, in my opinion, meant so much more was because Ole Miss is just better than Florida. <laughs> and that's what I said after the Florida game. I said, look, Jaden Daniels balled out. And this was actually something that I talked um, with Stephen Willis about the host of Locked on Ole Miss was we need to see what Jaden Daniels did against Florida. But with that being said, the Florida has a pretty abysmal defense. I mean, I highlighted this going into that game, that Florida had the 98th, gave up the 98th, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, 98th and nationally in yards per play. Okay, I don't know why that was just so difficult for me to get out there. They were giving up 5.7 yards per play. That's a lot. There we go. They're 125th in the country and third down conversions allowed. That's not good. They're giving up 412 yards per game, good for 99th in all of college football. So I looked at the Jaden Daniels performance and I didn't want to take anything away from it, but I also looked at it and thought, okay, well, was that just Jaden Daniels doing his job against a really bad defense or was that Jaden Daniels also starting to, to figure things out? And against Ole Miss, it proved to me that he is starting to figure things out, that it wasn't simply just a product of playing against a bad defense. Now, Ole Miss, on the other hand, compared to Florida, has a pretty solid defense. I mean, they rank second in the SEC in sacks, 19 on the season. And to compare that, LSU was six in the SEC with 14 sacks. And I think as LSU fans, we feel pretty darn good about our defensive line and the pressure that they've been able to get in the quarterback. And Ole Miss has just been that much better throughout the season. I mean, they sacked Auburn three times, Kentucky three times. This is a really solid defensive line that got, that I'm sure tried to get pressure on Jaden Daniels, but Jaden Daniels was still able to get the ball out quick enough and extend play with his legs to take advantage of that or to, to overcome that rather. So the two reasons why I think Jaden Daniels' performance was so much more impressive to me against Ole Miss than it was against Florida, not taking anything away from the Florida game, but the fact that he was able to do it two weeks in a row and is starting to prove that maybe he is who he was against Florida and Ole Miss rather than who he was against maybe Florida State or Auburn. And the second reason being it was against a really good team. And a, and a really good defense that has been able to get pressure on the quarterback all season long. 
So Jaden Daniels gets my offensive game ball. I think that we can be really excited about what we can see from Jaden Daniels moving forward throughout the rest of the season. But coming up next, what a freaking defensive performance from LSU. And I am loving that I'm getting in the habit of talking about how good this defense is. So who really stood out on Saturday? I want to get into that coming up next. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Simply Safe. So as everybody knows, athletes rise and fall in the ranks, teams rise and fall in the ranks. We see it every single week. The team that was on top could slip a couple a couple spots, but when it comes to saving money, Simply Safe, they're always on top. They're never slipping. They're never going down out of the AP Top 25. And right now you can save big with Simply Safe home security. They're giving listeners 40% off, 40% off of their advanced security system. Simply Safe was just named the best home security of 2022 by US News. I use it. I love it. It makes me feel so much safer in my house. And I think that you will love it too. Because at Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. So I live in a really, you know, crowded, really popping area of a really crowded and popping city. So sometimes at night, you know, I, I hear people coming home from bars or they're drunk and I hear a bunch of loud people and fast cars going outside of my window. And sometimes that can be a little bit disconcerting when you might be home alone late at night. But with Simply Safe, I don't feel that fear anymore because I know that I am protected. With 24 7 professional monitoring, when a threat is detected, Simply Safe's monitoring professionals promptly contact you and dispatch first responders to your home. Even if you're away or if you're unable to respond, they're going to take care of your home. The professional monitoring costs under a dollar a day. That's less than half the cost of ADT's trad traditional professional installed plans. I mean, you really could not put a price on safety, but when the price is that low, you'd be dumb to not take advantage of it. So don't miss this chance to save big when you protect your home with the best. Get 40% off your order when you visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Well, thanks for making Lives on LSU your first listen today. For the your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts, experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So Jaden Daniels has been absolutely lights out the past couple of weeks, but one area of this team that we, at least I feel, and you probably feel the same way, very comfortable with and confident in week in and week out, really ever since the beginning of this season, has been the defense. And it seems like I'm highlighting different players each week. And even when I do highlight players each week, I feel like there's three, four, or five more that I could highlight because they were making big time plays too. So kind of looking at my defensive game balls, I do this, I break my own rules every single week because I try to just stick with one player in each of the three phases that I can give a game ball to. But sometimes when they just play that good, sometimes they deserve more than one. So my first defensive game ball it seems pretty obvious. It goes to Harold Perkins. Harold Perkins earned SEC Freshman of the Week honors and de deservedly so. When Harold Perkins was put out on the field against Ole Miss, the game completely changed. The momentum for Ole Miss completely shifted. It looked like Ole Miss in the first quarter had all of these answers to LSU's defense and LSU's defense just couldn't do anything to stop them. And then Harold Perkins comes into the game and then Ole Miss's offense just looks dumbfounded. They couldn't get anything done. And that's it. He is a, a big part of the reason why LSU held Ole Miss to zero points to shut them out in the second half. Harold Perkins is a big reason why. I mean, Brian Kelly spoke about Harold Perkins after the game, just how much growth and progress he's made over the past couple of weeks. He was good. You know, he's active. As you saw, we, you know, it's it's hard to get him on the field as much, but we felt like it was a, it was really important to get him out on the perimeter because he can run things down and he's a very good pass rusher. Um, he's a he's an exceptional player. I think everybody knows that. Um, but within our structure, um, some guys lose some playing time because of it, and some really good players lose some playing time. Um, he's a really good player, and he impacts our defense, no doubt. So. 
When I heard Brian Kelly ask about Harold Perkins, I honestly expected a little bit more of an animated answer, um, a more an answer that more reflected how I think that I feel and probably a lot of LSU fans feel and probably, you know, the way that Lane Kiffin felt about Harold Perkins, him saying after the game, hey, you know, when 40 came in the game, Harold Perkins, things completely changed. He can just do things that other players can't. So to be completely honest with you, I expected a little bit more praise for Harold Perkins and Brian Kelly uh, from Brian Kelly than he really gave. And I think that's a couple of reasons. And it's something that I highlighted on yesterday's podcast. You can find on your preferred podcast platform. You can find it on YouTube. You can find all of the former um, Locked in LSU episodes. And I mentioned how and highlighted how putting in Harold Perkins in that style of play that LSU was playing in nickel and dime packages against a spread offense, that if you put Harold Perkins in, you're taking DJ Ojolari out because a team that likes to spread things out and is also really talented running the ball, you can't have you know, two pass rushers in there. Harold Perkins is a pass rusher, among other things. You know, he can kind of drop back. He can he can spy on the offense. He can drop back. He can almost play like, like a DB almost. Like Harold Perkins is an incredibly versatile you know, defensive player. Whereas B.J. Ojolari is more of a pure pass rusher. And not one is better than the other. It's just that those are their skills. And that's, you know, that's their skill sets. But putting in Harold Perkins against an offense like Ole Miss you have to take B.J. Ojolari out. And it sounded there in that clip, it sounded to me that Brian Kelly was incredibly apprehensive to take B.J. Ojolari out of the football game. And I think that the Tennessee game kind of proved that, hey, you're going to have to put Harold Perkins in because Tennessee, excuse me, LSU ran the same defense against Ole Miss that they did against Tennessee, taking Harold Perkins out because it was a spread offense and they didn't feel comfortable playing Harold Perkins in that pure outside linebacker position. Brian Kelly said he doesn't feel as comfortable with him on the outside that he does on the inside. I understand that. But I think that this, that Matt House's creativity to be able to put Harold Perkins in there um, and to be able to involve both Harold Perkins and B.J. Ojolari in obvious passing downs and, you know, third and longs, third and 10 pluses, I think that shows Matt House's creativity. And I think that Brian Kelly, and you know, props to Brian Kelly for understanding that what they did defensively against Tennessee just wasn't working and they had to do something different. And the defense that they were running against Ole Miss in that first quarter just simply was not working because Ole Miss was scoring on every single drive in their first three drives. So I can sense a little bit of apprehension and hesitation in Brian Kelly's voice when speaking about Harold Perkins and how, you know, how he... Seems apprehensive to take B.J. Ojolari out, understandably so. But with the rest of the games on, on LSU schedule, I don't think they're going to play a spread out, up-tempo, really quick, high-powered offense like they did against Ole Miss and Tennessee. So you're not going to see Harold Perkins or B.J. Ojolari. You're most likely going to see both, especially when they face Bryce Young um, in two weeks when Alabama comes to town. They're going to have to get as much pressure on Bryce Young as possible. So I, I sense the apprehension. I was a little bit taken aback at how little credit I think that Brian Kelly gave Harold Perkins, but I think that he deserves it. He gets one of my defensive game balls. The second defensive game ball, I don't know how I wouldn't give a defensive game ball to Joe Fouché for that, that big time interception coming up huge when Ole Miss was in the red zone. It was second and goal. They're at the LSU nine. They're driving. LSU is only up by four. Ole Miss could have taken the lead with a touchdown there. And Joe Fouché completely, you know, stopped Ole Miss's offensive momentum and gave LSU kind of that, that juju, kind of that, that spice that they needed because LSU went out there, took possession, scored on that possession, and Ole Miss didn't score a single time since then. So Joe Fouché completely changed the pace of the game and the momentum of, of the game. I don't know how I couldn't give him a defensive game ball, but uh, this was Brian Kelly uh, after the game about Joe Fouché and just how big that play really was. Yeah, the momentum really shifted there. You know, the the interception was probably the biggest play um, because they were threatening to score in that situation. And we felt like, okay, that was the first time where we got any extension in the game from them because it was score, score, score. That was probably the, the one big play in the game that gave us the ability to, to, you know, obviously pull away a little bit from them. So that was a huge play. And, you know, the pressure obviously had a lot to do with that. So the pressure, he puts it up, um, and we were able to get the big interception. 
And it, it's so true that that I looked at that single moment in the game. And I think that's where everything completely changed. So credit to Joe Fouché for making that play. And also I was remiss for, to not mention Micah Baskerville because, you know, I mentioned earlier this segment, I feel like every week defensively, there's like three or four or five players that I don't give credit to that probably deserve it. And Micah Baskerville is one of them because Micah Baskerville, I believe is one of those players who doesn't necessarily show up in the box score. But if you just simply look at a stat sheet, you're not going to see, you know, two or three sacks in a game from Micah Baskerville, but what you what you can see from watching the game is that his presence so much so is felt Case in point, Joe Fouché is going to show up on the stat sheet because of that interception, but what you're not going to see is the pressure that Micah Baskerville got on Jackson Dart to force him to make that throw and to throw into traffic right into Joe Fouché's hands in the end zone. So credit to Micah Baskerville for that that play and getting pressure on Jackson Dart and also Micah Baskerville just being a dog. But coming up next, a position group that I'm sick and tired of talking about and yeah, and I'm sick and tired of talking about, and I'll explain why coming up next. But before I do that, I want to let you know about LinkedIn Talent Solutions. So these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. And you probably bet on games. I know I do. I don't like to place money on high stakes bets. So why do that with your small business? You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. So that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So when my company, the radio station that I work for, we were looking for a producer because one of our producers left kind of on short notice and it was during football season, our busiest season of the year. So we needed someone to fill in that role and we needed to do it quickly. So we went to LinkedIn Jobs. All we had to do was go to LinkedIn.com and add the job and add the purple hashtag hiring frame to our LinkedIn profile to spread the word that we were hiring. That's as simple as it is. That's all you have to do too. Plus, LinkedIn has screening tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. When we were hiring a new producer, LinkedIn did all of the dirty work for us because it eliminated all of the candidates that didn't have the correct expertise or experience that we were really looking for. So we saved a bunch of time thanks to these tools from LinkedIn Jobs. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So I mentioned it. It's a, it's a position group that I'm just simply tired of talking about. And it's special teams. And I always say this about special teams. If you talk about it, it's either because it's really good or really bad. If you just do your job on special teams, it's not worth talking about. If you just catch punts, it's not worth talking about. If you just make your field goals and extra points, that's what you're supposed to do. It's not worth talking about. But I talk about special teams a lot, and it's not for a good reason. Because LSU had their fair share of special teams mistakes yesterday to go along with the rest of the special teams mistakes that we've been seeing from them all season long. But I give out a game ball no matter what. If, if LSU wins the game, I give out a game ball. So I'm looking at Noah Kane to be my, my special teams ball recipient of this week. Noah Kane had a 33-yard kick return. I mean, at this point, LSU was down 14-3, I mean, and they needed to get something moving. They needed to get some sort of points on the board because at this point in the game, Ole Miss had all the momentum. Ole Miss had complete control of that game, and LSU was settling for kicks. So a 33-yard kick return from Noah Kane. It was great. It set them up in great position to start. It also set LSU up um, in field goal position, in field goal range. So that would have been big, you know, set up in field goal range, cut the deficit to 14-6. Then, you know, it's the difference of a touchdown. You go for an extra point. You know, you score there. You're down 14-13. That's very much so. You know, it's manageable. Down 14-6, that game is manageable. But, you know, you're down 14-3. And if you aren't able to put points up there and Ole Miss scores again, now you're down 21-3 and the game started to get out of hand there. Um, so huge on Noah Kane to be able to set LSU up with solid field position. And they were able to drive in a field goal range. And of course, that was the 42-yarder um, that Damian Ramos did miss. 
So that's why Damian Ramos does not get my special teams ball this week because he missed that field goal. Um, but props to Noah Kane for that solid kick return because he that looked great. And it, it set L LSU up in great field position, even when Damian Ramos wasn't able to respond, wasn't able to, to kind of pick up the slack there and do his job on that end of the field. Still good on Noah Kane to be able to deliver on special teams. So my game balls for a massive, massive, massive win against Ole Miss. I can't even explain how big this game and this win really, truly was. But Jaden Daniels gets my offensive game ball, I think for obvious reasons. Um, Harold Perkins and Joe Fouché each get defensive game balls, and there are probably five more that I could give out for uh, defensively, especially for that second half defensive performance. Defense was just absolutely lights out, able to completely shut down a really high powered and quick offense. So good on the defense, good on Harold Perkins, good on Joe Fouché. Like a basketball is another one that I mentioned who should also get props as well for getting pressure on Jackson Dart and allowing Joe Fouché to make that play in the end zone. And uh, Noah Kane on special teams. So just a really great game and a really, really great win for LSU, especially you know going into the bye, having all of the confidence in the world going into the bye and all of the confidence in the world going into arguably the biggest game of the season with Alabama coming to town next Saturday. Now, coming up on tomorrow's episode of Locked in LSU, we will chat with uh, John Garcia Jr. of SI Recruiting, kind of get you know his temperature on how big the Ole Miss game was for recruiting. And there's a certain SEC school with some really good players that might be wanting to look for another school. We'll talk to John about that. So make sure to check out that tomorrow on your preferred podcast platform or on the Locked in LSU YouTube page. But thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus there's instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts.